It's R&R and R and R here on San Antonio Sports Star. I'm excited about this. He's Rudy J. I'm Rob Thompson. Welcome on the show, RJ Ochoa, the OG, RJ. the original, the rock the mic champ. He and blogging the boys sitting comfortably in the casa. Welcome on the show, RJ. Good to see you again, man. Great to see you all. Uh, let me say, Rob, the glasses distinguished. I haven't said that. I mean, you must look just like an incredible man when you have a glass of scotch in your hand. Late at night, I mean, it's just got to be a vibe. Late at really? night? I mean, Th- this isn't tea. No, that's true. Uh, Rudy, handsome as always. I yes, mean, sir. Same to you. Same to detail. you. So, so well done. Uh, Pledge, I have found Waldo. You are him with the stripes. So um, well done. <laughs> you look beautiful as well. You're in such a good mood. He got wow. a, you you're, know you're why? being nice because he has a, he has an infant and he got a date night the other day. I so he's saw re- that he's refreshed. You were released <laughs> back into the wild it's, for it's an evening. It's refreshing when you have an infant and you can finally get out the crib. Uh, that's true. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, it was great. Um, shout out to my friends JD and Ariel. Got married. Everybody said yes. So you always kind of hope that uh, you never know going into a wedding. Uh, <laughs> but um, but that that was kind of where the the happiness and the joy um, ended. Uh, JD's a Cowboys fan, so I mean, I feel worse for him. Uh, you know, first weekend as a married man, everything falls apart. So, you know, I bring fine. this up because no one bleeds blue more than you, not like him. And there's been a tenor on your articles over the last couple of weeks. You're mad at the Cowboys, you're, you're genuinely mad at them. Look, I um, I'm an only child, but I don't claim to be a perfect son, right? Like I've I've had some missteps in life. I've I've thought I was right when my my parents counseled me otherwise, and and you know, generally every time, maybe there was there was once or twice where you know I, I was kind of left standing, saying, "Ha, told you so." Right. But generally, <laughs> certainly when when it came to serious things growing up, um, I was wrong, you know, thinking I could do things my own way and whatnot, and. I'm not saying I'm the Cowboys parent, but all of this, look, I'm not a genius. I, I couldn't run an NFL team. I couldn't work in an NFL front office. I am a, a lowly blogger who sits in this room all day with my daughter. All my day? Husband, a very blessed man. All but, day? Um, that's right. But but all of these problems were predictable. We, 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 we screamed about them. We complained about them. RJ, stop complaining. Stop whining. Oh, oh RJ, you've turned into such a negative person on Twitter. Just, just, just let it play itself out. You know, they, as far as I'm concerned, they haven't lost any games. You're over here freaking out. Again, all of this was extremely – I thought it was incredibly surreal that on the broadcast, Chris Collinsworth was dragging them for their team-building philosophy. I can't think of a team where, where that's ever, you know, kind of been the case. Just everybody in the room knew that this was going to have, well, the offensive line is shaky. Who would have thought? Well, you have nobody to catch the ball from Dak Prescott. Wow, what a weird thing. Nobody's afraid of the non cd lamb options in your offense. Huh, that is stunning. This was all incredibly predictable. And I don't buy any of the conspiracy theories, Sean Payton stuff, whatever. I think that I have settled on the notion that they are just this bad at this. That's, just that's the, the only way I can, I can sleep well at night is, is to just believe that they actually suck at this. They suck this much. Man, so, so you basically saying it's like your mom telling you, "Hey, don't touch the stove, don't touch the stove." You touch the stove, you burned yourself. This is all they knew. All these problems were there. They didn't do anything to address them. But remember, RJ, and I said this earlier. For the longest, we've told Jerry stop throwing money at everything, stop throwing money at everything. Build this team through the draft. Build this team through the draft. And now he did that. He he answered the bell of his fans. He answered the bell of the media and said, "Okay, I'm going to build off the, I'm going to build through the draft, and I'm going to trust my young guys." And now everybody's telling them to throw money at it. I don't I think mean, we can have I, it both ways. Where do you come out on that? I think you can have it both ways. I think <laughs> elite, and, well, I mean, I think Go the ahead. Cowboys are a really, they're a really reactionary team. You know, so it's like, well, you know, building through free agency didn't work. Now let's build it. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum. There's never any landing in the middle, right? Like we, we, we had a head coach who was super like mean, like Bill Parcell. Let's go to Wade Phillips. Let's go to like, get, get this super soft guy. There's never any middle. It's one end to the other, wow, back yeah. and forth, back and forth. Gotcha. Um, and, and so fine. Don't build entirely to the draft. You can't do that. You, you have like people look at the Rams. The Rams have hit on some day three picks, which is why their models able to sustain itself. That didn't happen last week, which is why. They were embarrassing. The Cowboys, if you want to build to the draft, that's, again, you're purposefully denying yourself two other avenues of team building. But if you're elite at this one, maybe you can contend. Maybe you can compete. But as we found out, as the world found out on San Antonio Sports Star last Friday when Stephen Jones joined Jason Minnick, 
Jalen Tolbert. Hey, guys, don't worry about trading away Amari. Tolbert's ready. He's coming in day one. He did He's tell produce. us that. I, my, my mentions were filled with just relax. Tolbert's going to be awesome. A healthy scratch. And I don't think that spells doom and gloom for, for Tolbert's career in Dallas. But that, that is in and of itself an admission, whether outright or not, that the Cowboys were wrong. That the Cowboys cannot just Indiana Jones idle swap established <laughs> veteran players for, for rookies from South Alabama. And, and it's unfortunate because now Jalen Tolbert is, is, you know, kind of the person who has to carry the sins of the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Noah Brown has to carry the sins of the Cowboys. Matt Farniak at left guard has to carry the sins of the Cowboys. And they become the subjects of vitriol. Simi Fajoko sucks. He can't even get open. Of course he can't get open. We know this. You, you can't, you know, nobody else is, is running out there expecting the Simi Fajokos of the world to get open except for the Dallas Cowboys. All right, short-term fixes. Um, on that offensive line, where do you expect Jason Peter to land? Right tackle? Left tackle? Good question. It would be a disaster if he was at right tackle. It, it, it truly would. I mean, that would be a reaction. Oh, to, hey, look, Tyler Smith played well. You know, how can, how can we move it? You can move the rookie after one game. Like, you, I promise it will be fine. If, if you're going to show deference to anybody, it should be the 40-year-old, 100-year veteran in the <laughs> NFL, in Jason Peters. And what's more is, is Terrence, if they, and like, I'm not, look, if Terrence Steele sucks, bench him. But Terrence Steele is kind of the reason for all this. Two years ago, Cowboys found him out of Texas Tech. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, we turned him into something legitimate here. All right, we can develop. We can do this. We can move on from Lyle Collins because we know we have Terrence Steele. We can trust Josh Ball to be the swing tackle on this team because we developed Terrence Steele. So if you wave the white flag here, it means that you are maybe not infallible in the other areas of your team building philosophy that you have built an enormous amount of this project on. The foundation was always cracked. It was. And the Cowboys said, hey, I mean, the, an earthquake might push it back together. We never know. Like, let's just charge forward with it. And are we going to just say that Micah Parsons is no longer middle linebacker and he's the uh, the opposite side edge rusher? Are we, I mean, because that's, that's, that's the only place I remember from him is the edge. There's, there's a reason he plays what he does at linebacker. B. I, besides the fact that, that he – plays the position at a high level. He right. plays at linebacker so that in two years, they can pay him like a linebacker instead of paying him like a pass rusher. There's a big Ooh. difference in pass rush. That's dirty pool, linebacker. RJ. Are you are oh, you we, suggesting that Steven and Jerry would play dirty pool to pay to, to lowball him? Well, their form or the, the guy everybody thinks they have eyes for and Sean Payton did it with Jimmy Graham. You're not That's a, a hot take. Jimmy Graham. You're a tight end. And I'm, I'm not saying they're purposefully denying how great Michael Parsons can be as a pass rusher. But, but the paycheck is different. That I paycheck agree. is that different is, from middle linebacker and an edge rusher. Totally different. De definitely a benefit. To if he, and again, he's wow. an amazing linebacker. But his, his greatest impact, we all know, is rushing the passer. And look, you, there are cons to using him as a full-time pass rusher. I don't want to make it seem like there are not. But that is definitely something that comes into play here. Is hey, we got That's what we hear. About. We can't pay everybody, guys. We we can't go get free agents for CDs. And look, you you think there isn't a little victory lap? Like, hey, I guess we don't have to pay CD a ton in the off season, right? Like CD kind of sucks. So like we can probably get CD for a bargain now. Like you know, Trayvon didn't even have an interception, right? Like we're good. Like we're we're coming up nice here when it comes to 2023. Uh, well, it sounds funny, and it does. And before we talk about quarterback and Prescott and injuries and screws and bolts. The can we kind of assume that they're telling us one thing but acting in completely different? When you look in hindsight, you look at what went on in the preseason, they said they'd be active, they weren't. They didn't keep Collins, mm -hmm. they let Gregory walk. Uh, they uh, who else we lose? Cooper gets traded, Von Miller's appropriate and available, they don't spend any money. Can we go by their actions that this year was a let's clean house kind of de kind of month kind of year and they never had any intention to really chase this thing the way they told us they were? You also I would also add Connor Williams. Oh yeah, Connor you Williams too. Who he, graded he a, out fantastic this week, yeah, by the way. Um and and Cedric Wilson, right? Like and you know some of these things, like I don't think I don't think they forecasted that the receiver market would blow up and Amari's right. deal would would look like such a bargain. But you have to be able to do that. You have to be able to say there's all these receivers coming up. What's the market going to look like? You have to plan. You have to have a plan B. You have to be prepared for the worst case scenario and know what you do along the flow chart of, of timelines. And so they're not. They live and die in. Well, they live and we die rather in plan A. 
And so I disagree with you, Rob. I think they really thought it would work. Okay. I mean, th- th- that we, you know, that we've seen them do this with different players. Chaz Green, he's gonna, he got to do it. He, he has to, he's got to step up. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the NFL, and you got to step up, Chaz. and you just got to do your job. <laughs> like it doesn't happen because you want to, right? Like if I walked onto a movie set, it was like I'm just gonna act. I believe that I can act. I'm, I'm in Fast and the Furious 28 now, and I can do it. <laughs> like no, you, like this, that doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. <laughs> And, and so I, I, I think that they really thought – I think they thought the division was weak, and I think they thought that yes. Dak Prescott was head and shoulders, the best quarterback in it. And that they, they rightly thought to a degree that C.D. Lamb is this alpha receiver, but that, that has kind of been the thing they've been the most wrong about. We've all been wrong about. And I think they thought, we'll be fine. Michael will do it again. They thought they would be the exception. Regression on defense? No. Trayvon's going to have 11 interceptions again. What do you mean regression and it happening you know, 100 years running? We'll be the one. We'll be the one plus one equaling three. Everybody else will equal two. We'll equal three. Dude, and we, I, I hate we don't have enough time because I can't believe you've given up on CD. But again, we I haven't given up on him, to be clear. But he's Not like, given up on him, but you don't think he's a one. I don't, I don't know Current I don't evidence. Want, but, but, but he, it's... he was crowned. And some of that was just like the prematurity and the hype and the CD and everything like that. But wow. he, he was supposed to be, he, he had opportunities last year as well. Like we have to stop like giving CD these excuses or we got to stop giving Dak these excuses. Like that we, we can acknowledge he, he was in a terrible situation, triple coverage, whatever. You want to be a baller? You want to be an alpha? You want to be the way you want to be talking about the way we talk about Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase? They find a way. You know, like they, you know, Justin Jefferson's done it with Kirk Cousins every single week. Like you should be able to to find a way to some degree. I'm not saying you have to go off for 184 yards every week, but two I catches agree. off 11 targets. Again, agree. there's some context that's necessary there, but there, there is some failure on CD's end as well. I didn't know you were going to come in here with double fisted Molotov cocktails, but I'm here for it. Okay, one uh, last. I mean, what else? I know, Rob. I got like three more. Oh, but we got one so more. much. One more, Rob. Go ahead. Well, uh, the quarterback. Okay, so they're, they're convinced or at least comfortable with the fact, for at least in the very short term, that Cooper Rush will be it. Do you see any possibility that they're con- going to continue to look? Or, like you just said, they're going to be confident in the fact that Cooper Rush has a lot to offer? Look, I don't, Ugh. I don't want to be negative. I have a son. I have to teach him about positivity in life, and you know, looking, looking for the bright side. And yeah. But I mean, I don't know how you can objectively say Cooper Rush is is the worst backup quarterback in the NFL. And I said this at the time, and I'm, I in no way mean to be like I was right, blah blah blah. But at the time when the Cowboys beat the Vikings last year, my terrifying thought was this is going to justify the the mm-hmm. future means they they are going to say. Cooper won this game in Minnesota. He threw a last second touchdown to Amari, Amari Cooper Rush, and they're gonna they're gonna live, they're gonna build an empire off of this fraction. And they did it the year before. When when y'all went to camp last year, Garrett Gilbert, yep. dude, he almost beat the Steelers in 2020. All right. Oh, so like yeah. he's pretty good. You know, let's let's all give Garrett Gilbert a shot. He got beat out by the aforementioned Cooper Rush. Cooper, respect. You went to Minnesota, dude. Congratulations. But that was not enough. And and this again is a purely reactionary team. Why would they make a move when the last time they started Cooper Rush, they won a game? Why would that not happen again? Just because they wanted to. Why would why would one and one not make three? It, one and one made three in Minnesota. But I mentioned Justin Jefferson, Love it. and we saw last week the Vikings go off. All right. I think we have enough data, even off of a one game sample size, to say Mike Zimmer trapped that team. Cooper Rush didn't beat the Vikings as much as mm, Mike Zimmer held them down exactly. while Cooper Rush just stepped over them. And so, I mean, guess what, Cooper Rush? Welcome to the Cincinnati Bengals. Welcome to a, a, a crappy offensive line. Well, like, it's going to be a lot harder for Cooper Rush than Amari Cooper in the fold. And when they get blown out, it's embarrassing. And Tony Romo's like, oh, well, Jim, uh, you know, this, this reminds me of back when Doug Free was blocking. <laughs> We're all going to be sitting here, and be sitting here and be frustrated. I mean, it's, it's like the, the yeah. terrifying thing. Is we are this ride is just starting. We're, we're still on the that, upward track of the coaster. Like we haven't even begun the bottom. We're hit that first drop. All right, you're gonna get that every week as we head on the other side of the roller Great coaster. Stuff, the RJ. dips are coming, and when they do, RJ Ocho will be here to pick so us up. Happy. Hey, make sure you're hitting blogging the boys every day. Don't call yourself a cowboy fan if you're not. RJ Ochoa, thank you so much for stopping by. We'll see you next week, man. My guy. Later, One more, bro. guys. Survivor starts next Wednesday. Make sure you watch it. Talk about it. <laughs> what? Yeah. Survivor. Are these people still running around islands naked? Absolutely. Naked and afraid. How long has that show been on? 30? At least.